welcome to Go Vote Omaha. This is a candidate forum for Legislative District 39 in the unicameral presented by the League of Women Voters of Greater Omaha. I'm Jerry Simon, a League member and moderator for the forum. The League of Women Voters never supports or opposes political parties or candidates. We present this forum solely for voter education. Here's the format for our forum. Each candidate will have a one minute opening statement. We'll follow that with questions and answers. Each candidate will have up to 90 seconds to answer every question, and the candidate who answers the question first will have up to 30 seconds of rebuttal time if they wish. We'll follow that and conclude with a one minute closing statement by each candidate. A timekeeper will alert the candidates when they should stop speaking. Before our candidate forum this evening, the candidates drew lots to determine their initial speaking order, and I'll introduce them to you in that order now. There are two candidates running for the unicameral seat in District 39, and they are Bill Armbrust and Lou Ann Lenahan. And we'll start with our opening statements with Bill Armbrust. Thank you. Thank you to the League of Women Voters for giving us the opportunity to uh, speak and inform the uh, voters about the issues that are important to them. Uh, my name is Bill Armbrust. Uh, many in the district already know me very well. I've lived and worked in the, my entire life in this district. Uh, I'm a fifth generation uh, to farm in Douglas County and I've run a business and raised my kids here and have grandchildren in the Elkhorn School District now. I am a reflection, I feel, of the values and the attitudes of this district. I'm a sanctity of life person and a pro-Second Amendment person. I'm compassionate to those that are less fortunate and, I, and the ones that are in need of a hand. I'm all about hard work, efficiency, and teamwork. I'm a solution-based person and I do not run away from challenges. Our expectations in this district and my expectations are very high. I spent the last 35 years as, a, as part of the army of thousands, volunteers working in the community to make our district a great place to live and raise Thank a you. family. Thank you. Lou Ann Lenahan. Good evening. Thank you to the League of Women Voters for having this forum tonight. I appreciate it very much, as I'm sure most Nebraskans do. I, my name is Luann Linehan. I grew up in Crab Orchard, Nebraska, which is the southeast part of the state on a dairy farm, which is too far from where my great-great-grandmother homesteaded with four of her sons. Uh, I, t I attended a small school in southeast Nebraska, and I went to University of Nebraska, where I met my husband, Kevin. We were married in 1980. When I moved to Omaha, we have four children and four grandchildren, and lucky for us, the grandchildren are still now in Omaha as well. I'm running for legislature because I feel that our taxes, both income and property taxes, are much too high. When I go door to door, which I have done since last spring, almost every weekend I run into one or two couples who are considering if they haven't already sold their homes because they simply cannot afford the taxes that we have here in Nebraska. Thank you. Now our first question. What can Nebraska do to better support our schools without raising property taxes? What's the state's obligation for school funding? And we'll start with Lou Ann Lenahan. Uh, there's a history to this that I feel people need to understand. In 1990, the state agreed because after, as Bill remember, the farm, the Farmers, there was a farm crisis in Nebraska in the 1980s. It was very harsh. Many farmers lost their farms and some banks went close. And in 1990, there was an initiative on the ballot to help keep property taxes down. It was uh, LB 1059, I believe. It might not be right. But the point was we were going to raise income taxes one percentage point each year for two years and then raise sales tax one penny. And that money was to go help K through 12 education. And also, importantly, if we had state aid, then we could help keep property taxes down. Well, 25 years later, and almost a billion dollars in state aid that goes to K through 12, our property taxes are higher than they've ever been. So I don't think it's a matter of like switching. I know that there's, I know the governor is working on this. And I know that uh, Senator Jim Smith from Papillion, I've talked to him, he's trying to figure out how we can both keep our schools strong, which they need to be. I'm a big believer in public education. It's critical that our youth learn um, and have the opportunities that I did and my husband and I were able to ensure our children had. I want that for all Nebraskans. Um, but we've got to also make sure that we're spending money wisely 
and I will work with Jim and the governor to figure out how best to do that. Thank you. Bill Arbrist. Well, in uh, supporting school funding, I think that you, you need to take a look at the fact that it is a responsibility of the, of the citizens of Nebraska to educate our children well, and we do a great job in the state of Nebraska in public education doing that currently. Uh, for the last 30 years or so, we've had a constant shift of uh, funding away from the, the, uh, the uh, support from the state to the schools. Uh, like Luann mentioned, we did have a brief period of time where we brought that back. But the burden on, on educating our children has been placed uh, more and more on the, the uh, local taxpayers to the point where Nebraska currently today is, is uh, uh, one of the highest uh, states in the, in the United States for uh, using property taxes to educate our children. We do need to go back to more state support uh, for this, but also in that there's always efficiencies that can be built into uh, what we're doing on the local basis. And I really believe in, in uh, taking the local uh, community in and, um, and using the votes that they have for their school board to make sure that there's accountability within every school board to make sure that they're spending the local taxes as well as they possibly can. Uh, but I am a strong supporter of the public education in the state of Nebraska, and I look forward to continuing that in the legislature. Thank you. Any rebuttal? I would just like to mention one thing. One of the things that I think we could do that would reduce property taxes immediately, and they made it, the legislature did make one step toward that this year. They did away with a common levy, which was very unfair to Elkhorn and DC West schools. So they did away with common levy, but they kept the learning community and gave it taxing authority. So I don't think we need any more people, any more uh, entities added to our property taxes. So I would do away with taxing for, you, for the learning community. Thank you. Here's our next question. What should be done about our prison system? How can we pay for new staff and boosting current salaries, things that a new report says are essential? And we'll start with Bill Armbrust. Well, public safety needs to be our first priority always. Um, when we talk about quality of life in the state of Nebraska, uh, one of the, the main foundational pieces to that is to make sure that the communities are safe. So we need to always take a look at, at making sure that our prisons are, are funded well and are doing what they're supposed to do. Are they effective? That's something that we need to take a look at. And why are our prisons uh, com overpopulated right now? That may be a question that can go back to finding answers in our, in our history. For the last 20 or 30 years, what have we done uh, to, uh, to cause this prison system to possibly be uh, exploding at the seams as it is right now. Uh, so this, this goes to a, taking a little bit of a look at history so that we can solve the problem t for 20 years from now that's going to come as well. But what I would like to, to see in the prison system is that we make sure that we fully fund this as well as we need to to get through the current situation and then take a look at what we need to do to uh, to take some of the, uh, the uh, current prisoners that are there and perhaps uh, find other ways of, of dealing with them. Perhaps there's, there's uh, some of those folks that are, uh, have addiction problems. There could be folks in there that I know there's folks in there with mental health problems. Let's make sure that we're dealing with all of this correctly. Uh, I have no expertise really in this area, but I certainly uh, have heard from a lot of folks. Thank you. Luann Lenahan. Um, I think I'm proud of Governor Ricketts for his hire and to be honest with us that we have got a problem with the prison system. Uh, as Bill said, public safety is definitely the business of our state government. And if people need to be in prison, we need to have room for them to be in prison. And we also need to have our prisons in a way that you don't have rights like they did in Tecumseh, which is his cost, I don't remember the damage, it was in the millions and two inmates were killed. So that's not acceptable. It's also not acceptable, well, as we've all known, over the last few years, people were let out of prison earlier than they should have been, and one tragic case out two weeks and murdered people. So we have to keep the dangerous people in prison. And I also agree with Bill, and I talked to people about this. I think maybe some of the, we need to figure out who needs to be in a secure facility, locked down, and some of maybe 
every prison cell doesn't have to be uh, as secure as they built in Tecumseh. There are some ways maybe, but if it's, if it's a dangerous criminal, they need to be in jail. The other thing, I agree with what Bill said, we need to look at mental health. And I have seen estimates up to 60% of the people who are in prison have mental health issues. And that goes back to addressing our mental health issues in a way that helps these people not end up in prison. Thank you. Any rebuttal? The beautiful thing about this subject is that this is a, uh, a nonpartisan Nebraska subject. This is very easy for all Nebraskans to take a look at and, and have agreement on. Uh, the, the, the partisanship has found no way to enter into it, and we can sit down and we can find solutions to this. Uh, I love that part of, uh, of the legislature. Thank you. Here's our next question. What do you propose about Medicaid expansion? Wouldn't it help to offset the budget shortfall and help provide much needed mental health services? And we'll start with Luann Lenahan. I'm, I am against expanding Medicaid. I, I don't think it's honest for me to sit here and say that I am going to go to Lincoln and work hard every day to cut taxes, income taxes and property taxes, and then say, oh, and also expand Medicaid. I just, it's not an honest way to look at things. I know Medicaid is meant to take care of children and meant to take care of the disabled. When you expand it beyond that, I question, I, I feel bad for people who don't have health insurance, but it's, it's an obligation that people need to take care of uh, their health. One of the problems we have with health insurance is people insure so they don't lose, I'm sure Bill has insurance, we have insurance because if we get sick, we want insurance so we don't lose our house or our farms or go into bankruptcy. If you don't have anything, there's no loss. So the ones who really pick up the tab on this are the hospitals. And I am willing, and I've told the hospital association this, I would like to work, look at ways that help them, help them make whole, help make them whole, but I don't think we gain by handing out health insurance to people who are able-bodied and who could get a job and could get health insurance. Another thing I think strikes me strange, if you, we give people, I know everybody can get in trouble, so I'm not saying that, but if you give people health insurance and then you have a family of six. Thank you. Um, Bill Armbrust. Well, if you look at the demographics of who these people are that, that are looking for help that, that fall in this gap, uh, you're looking at folks that many times have health problems that are keeping them from being able to hold a good job or find success in their life, or they may have mental health problems that, that they really don't have the, uh, the ability to go and take care of. So then they get themselves locked into this situation of an unsuccessful life. Uh, you also can take a look at the fact that we're leaving about $16 billion on the, on the table for spending $1 billion in the state of Nebraska. When that money starts bouncing around the state of Nebraska over the next 10 years, you're looking at a tremendous amount of economic help that's going to come to rural hospitals uh, into uh, uh, employing a lot more folks. You, in the end, that this program is going to not cost us anything. It will be very neutral or, it'll or we may benefit from it, but in the meantime, from the standpoint of what this does for us, uh, it, it helps a lot of folks that are, that are st stuck in a place where they can't find a successful life. Uh, I think that you can support this from your heart and you can support this from your pocketbook. So I'm definitely in support of uh, Medicaid expansion. Thank you. Any rebuttal? Yes. I, the money that comes from Washington, D.C. is taxpayers' money, too. I mean, I don't think most Nebraskans who think their uh, federal income taxes are too low. So it's, I don't agree with the argument that if we do this, then we get more money, so then it's really not costing us anything. First of all, it will cost us, and it will also cost the federal government. I just, I don't think giving health care to people is the right way forward. Able-bodied people. Again, children and those who are disabled should be Thank able you. to get Medicaid. Okay, our next question. What should be done about the state budget shortfall? If your position is that you don't want to raise taxes or you want to reduce taxes further, tell us exactly which services you would cut to balance the budget. Be very specific. And we'll start with Bill Armbrust. 
we may be looking at more than the $95 million uh, shortfall that uh, I think was the, the last number that was quoted. Uh, and this is a very serious thing, but uh, when we start talking about cutting programs, uh, that's not the only place that we can take a look at. There's a, there's a, a lot of exemptions that are also built into the system that, that also should be taken a look at. I also, I, I believe that the governor is doing the right thing when he's asking the agencies all to tighten their belts. There's absolutely efficiencies that can be found in all of these areas. Uh, there's a generally, there's a need for a businessman attitude uh, to go in there and take a look at all programs uh, from the standpoint of uh, what are they supposed to do, are they effective in doing it, and if they're not effective in doing it, how are they going to change what they're doing or we need to remove that program or, or re change that agency over to doing something that, that's more effective. In all of that, we can find, we can find I'm sure, um, many ways to save some money. Uh, to say there's any one single program that we're going to cut, we need to take a look at all of these programs. And I think that the Appropriations Committee down in Lincoln will do a fine job of, of sorting through all of this. And, and so I guess what I'm t saying is uh, there's, we need to put all things on the table and take a look at uh, where we're going to find the, the uh, save the dollars. And I think next year we're going to be even more trouble. Thank you. Lou Ann Lenahan. I'm not an expert on the state's budget, but uh, I will go for what I think I know. So it's a $95 million shortfall and a $3.5 billion budget. $3.5 billion is a lot of money. So I think you can, as Bill said, and as the governor has requested, I think you can look for savings and efficiencies in the agencies. <clears throat> and that is clearly where we should go first. When it comes to cutting specific programs, I, I don't know that I've got a specific program I would cut. I do know, and this happens in the federal government too, they used to call them earmarks. I know some of it happens in Nebraska. When money's tight, there's maybe not so many special projects that you can pay for in that particular year, whether it, and they're all good projects. There's nothing, I'm not saying that we've wasted any money, but sometimes you have to not get what you would like to have. You just have to be satisfied with what you can afford, like most of us in life. Thank you. Any rebuttal? The uh, shortfall is due almost entirely to the fact that grain prices have fallen for farmers. Uh, this year, we're look, we've seen that ripple through the entire economy, but we haven't seen all of the ripples. There's going to be splashes that happen next year. So we need to get a hold of this and decide how we're going to function the next couple of years with much tighter budgets than we're even dealing with uh, this coming year. Thank you. Here's our next question. Do you support advancing a proposal for charter schools in Nebraska? Do you support use of school vouchers or scholarships that really are the same thing as vouchers? And we'll start with Lou Ann Lenahan. Here is where I'm on public education. Um, I'm a big supporter of public education. When we raised our children, we were uh, fortunate enough that when we were unhappy with one school, we moved to a different school district, which we fell in love with, and my son has now moved back, so his four kids can go to that school district, which is Westside. I live in Elkhorn now, as Bill does, and I go to the football games at Elkhorn on Friday nights, and it's both high schools, Elkhorn South and Elkhorn High are amazing schools. They've got great bands and great football players, and Steve Baker, who is the superintendent out there, I think does a superb job. But it is interesting that Elkhorn can build, I think they've just uh, dedicated their 10th elementary school, and they bought land for another elementary school. So they have a huge budget, including building buildings and educating kids who score amazing scores on their ACT test. And their cost per pupil is less than the state average, quite a bit less than the state average. Um, I think we have to look at options for people who can't afford to live in Elkhorn, who can't afford to live in Millard, or who can't afford to live in Westside, who are stuck in neighborhoods with persistently failing schools where third graders, maybe less than half of them are proficient at th third grade level. It's not acceptable. We got to move. Those Thank parents you. deserve options Thank too. Thank you. Bill Armbrust. Um, this is a subject that Luann and I do differ on and I do appreciate the argument that she makes on this but 
Uh, charter schools in the state of Nebraska, first of all, aren't really a nece necessary subject to even talk about at this point. Uh, what I'd like to see happen is, is giving our schools more flexibility to be innovative within the public schools and uh, all of that comes down to giving more local control to the school boards and also giving more control to the teachers in, in their classrooms to, uh, to be flexible in designing their classroom to, to work for their particular situation. Uh, there's, a, there's an awful lot of work that we can do within the public schools to solve the problems that, that many people are saying would be solved by, by charter schools. Uh, charter schools do function well in other parts of this, the country where, where there's a different situation, but in the state of Nebraska we haven't even started to, uh, to try to solve the problems here that, that many people are saying would be solved with charter schools. I'm completely against charter schools or uh, doing the vouchers. I am in full support, though, of public schools opening their doors up for special programs with the, with the homeschoolers and with the private schools to enrich their lives. So that's the area that I would like to see uh, more work done to, uh, to bring all of those kids to, uh, to an, another level with uh, the arts and with sports and with many other programs. Thank you. Any rebuttal? I just want to say, I think we have to be honest first. We have to be very honest. Not all schools in Nebraska are successful right now. And I'm not saying, I'm not an expert, I'm not sure why that is, but we have parents who don't have choices. And then we have other parents who live in Elkhorn and Millard who have lots of choices. Good, great public schools. Not just good, but excellent public schools. Excellent parochial schools that they can afford. I think St. Patrick's in Elkhorn has 850 kids. It's a great school. but. We have to face the Thank fact you. that's not Thank everywhere. You. Okay, this will be our final question, and we'll start with Bill Armbrust. How will you build coalitions and work with other senators in the unicameral? I think that I have the skills that I've built over the last 40 years of, of living in this district and living in this state uh, that are probably uh, going to be very useful to me in the, in the legislature. Uh, I've worked in, across the entire state in my business. I, I, I've run cows in 13 counties across the state of Nebraska. I've worked with the State uh, Farm Service Agency State Committee and worked in 75 counties. And, and I know the state of Nebraska. I know how to talk agriculture. I know how to talk rural issues. I also am married to a gal from South Omaha. I have lots of friends in, in, that, that live in the, in the urban areas. I've, I've watched the suburbs of Omaha grow. I've taught, taught, I've coached baseball for 18 years in the suburbs of Millard and, and Elkhorn. I know how to speak the languages of all of these, these folks. I know how to talk about the issues to each other. And I think when I go down to the legislature, I'll be able to bring all sides together and communicate better uh, in their languages about the issues that the other folks on the other side are talking about. Um, my perspective on so many issues is, is real wide and real deep, and I, I think that I'm probably uh, particularly skilled at, at doing exactly what you're talking about. Thank you. Lou Ann Lenahan. I think one of the most important things about building coalitions is being a good listener. And I have a little side story here. When I was a child and still suffer today from dyslexia, so it was very difficult for me to read and write. But when you can't read or write, what you do, you learn to listen very, very well and listen to people, not just what they're saying, but what they're meaning and the emotion attached to that. You can't build coalitions unless you're willing to listen to the other person, figure out where they're coming from, and then see where you can, where you can work together. Most people, whether they're Democrats or liberals or Republicans and conservatives, they all want to end up in the same place. They want a better life for all Nebraskans. So I think if you know in your heart that that's why 49 people run for the state legislature and want to be in the legislature, that's why they're there. So be willing to work with them. And none of us are going to solve these problems by ourselves. You have to work across the aisle. You have to work with the governor's office. And I think I've done that for 25 years. I worked, as my bio said, I worked for Senator Chuck Hagel. I was his chief of staff for most of his Senate career. 
the whole time he was in that position we worked with the other senators we work with our congressman and we work with the legislatures and the governors to help solve problems for nebraska it was always very important to him and to me that we reached out to people and listened to their concerns thank I th you any rebuttal yes um our unicameral is nonpartisan, and there's not supposed to be an aisle in our in our unicameral uh, partisanship is one of the big problems with getting folks to work with each other, bringing partisan politics from Washington DC or whatever the talking points comes from is part of the problem with uh, getting some of the solutions that we need solved and getting people to talk. So uh, I would work very hard to be as nonpartisan as I possibly can and, and avoid that aisle that some people want to put in there. Thank you. Now time for closing statements and we'll begin with Lou Ann Lenahan. Again, thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting us tonight. I have lived most of my life in Nebraska and really love this state. My children, four of them, out of the four, three live here, and as I said, all our grandchildren live here. I think we have one of the best work ethics in the country. I think we are blessed with an amazing amount of common sense. And I want to make sure that we kind of keep on the same road, which is fiscal conservative. I am pro-life. I support the Second Amendment. I um, believe that we should have the death penalty. If, we, if you have a heinous criminal who's dangerous, they, there is a reason for the death penalty. I would appreciate your vote. Um, and thank you again. Thank you. Bill Armbrust. Well, I think that the voters will probably want to take a look at the fact that there are uh, many similarities between the two candidates. I am also pro-life. I am also a Second Amendment uh, supporter. Um, I am also very fiscally conservative. I'm a very constitutionally conservative person. If you read my Facebook posts, you'll be able to read deeply on that. Uh, the differences that I think are in this race is that uh, I grew up here. I know this district like the back of my hand. I know every gravel road and every, every highway in the area. And I, and I know the people of this district, uh, and they know me. And I feel like I'm a reflection of the attitudes and the values of this district. And as people take a look at this race and decide who they're going to vote for, I think that that's going to be the main difference in this race. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our candidate forum for Legislative District 39. For the League of Women Voters, I'm Jerry Simon reminding you to inform yourself about the issues and candidates. And on Election Day, November 8th, go vote, Omaha.